to Melang. Let us do the statement of profit or loss or the income statement. I know that I said and the notes to the financial statements. Please note that for this question, there is no, we were not required to prepare notes to the financial statements. So it's basically a past paper worth 50 marks for 45 minutes, grade 10 past paper that is. It is just on the preparation of your income statement, i.e. the statement of profit or loss, okay? Now, who are we dealing with here? The following information relates to Mbele traders. The financial year ended on 30 June 2022. Note that we are Mbele traders, all right? We are Mbele traders. And I will draw my financial year. It means that my financial year will start on the 1st of July 2021 and it will end on the 30th of June 2022. I really can't use this information that is given under the balance sheet section. Um, for now, because I'm only required to prepare the income statement, i.e. the statement of profit or loss, I will mainly look at the nominal accounts section. I have been given sales there of 340230 Cost of sales is 165200 Debtors allowances is 6000 When I record that debtors allowances in my statement of profit or loss, I'm going to subtract it from sales. But do not subtract it from cost of sales because the fact that you've got debtors allowances under the nominal account section, it means that the cost of sales to that debtors allowances has already been recorded. And the cost of sales to this 6600 um, has already been recorded in that 165,200. So you don't need to minus it from sales and then minus the cost price from cost of sales. You'll be double counting when you do that. Now, I'm going to record everything that is given to me here in my pre-adjustment trial balance under the nominal accounts section. I need you to notice that these three here, it's actually these two here, which is your interest on loan and interest on fixed deposit. You don't record interest on loan under other operating expenses. You record it down there on the statement of profit or loss, right at the bottom. And your interest on fixed deposit will also be um, recorded right at the bottom of your statement of your income statement. I mean, on, at the bottom of your income statement. And we are going to write it there as interest income. Interest on loan will be recorded as interest expense right at the bottom of your income statement. We together there? All right. Let me just take everything that is under the nominal account section and put it in my income statement. I will start with sales and cost of sales and then subtract debtors allowances from sales. Then I've got rent income, salaries and wages, telephone, water and electricity, and bad debts this side. Continuing in the other side, let's check what we have there. We have insurance, we've got interest expense, we've got interest income, we've got employer's contribution. And um, the last one was commission income. So commission income will be recorded here. It will be recorded under operating income. And then that's it. I'm done with everything that is under the nominal account section in my pre-adjustment trial balance. Now I am going to start with my adjustments. The first adjustment says that the following accounts for June 2022, which is right at the last month of our financial year, these accounts were received but were not yet paid. So for water and electricity, we've got 334. It was incurred, meaning that we have used that water and electricity, but we have not paid for it, and telephone was 478. These qualify to be accrued expenses. Now, the notes to the financial statements were not asked in this question. Those two will actually be recorded in trade and other payables as accrued expense, and we will add them up and record them in trade and other payables as accrued expense. But for now, because the notes were not asked. I will start with water and electricity. That 334 means that our water and electricity has been understated. I need to add it to my water and electricity, meaning that my total expense for water and electricity for the year 
will be 7,234. And my total expense for telephone will be that 3,420 plus 478. Therefore, my total telephone expense will be 3,898. Let's move to the next adjustment. A credit note was issued to a debtor, and that debtor is Bootlet Traders, 1,200. The cost of sales was 800. Here, you were lucky to be given cost of sales. In most cases, they will not give you cost of sales. They will give you a markup, and you will have to use the markup to calculate cost of sales. If they gave you cost of sales, they'll give you the markup so that you can calculate sales. But here you were given both. It's your lucky day. Now, note that a credit note is a source document that is issued by us Mbele. We issued that credit note as Mbele traders. We issued it to Bule traders. Bule is a debtor to us. And a credit note is a source document that we issue to a debtor when that debtor returns goods to us. And when a debtor returns goods to us, four accounts will be affected. We first debit debtor's allowances and credit debtor's control. Then debit trading stock and credit cost of sales. Those are four accounts that will be affected. Now, when we debit debtors' allowances, we actually reduce in sales. So we have to reduce sales by that 1,200. At the same time, we have to reduce our debtors' control, which in most cases will be in trade and other receivables. But here we were not asked for trade and other receivables, so we'll leave that out. So what I'm going to do now is to reduce sales because that's what I can prepare right now. And those are the first two. You debit debtors allowances, you credit debtors control with the selling price or at selling price. The other two accounts, you debit trading stock because you're getting more stock. When you debit trading stock, you're saying that data returns stock, so you'll have more stock, and that will be recorded here. So you're going to have trading stock. In the trial balance, our trading stock was sitting at 99000 But because the data returned stock, the cost price of that stock will increase the trading stock that we already have, and it will increase it to 99800 However, we are going to credit cost of sales. Note that cost of sales is only debited when we sell stock. It increases on the debit side when we sell stock. But here, a debtor returned goods. So when a debtor returned, we returns goods, we need to reduce our cost of sales by the cost price of 800. Now calculate your total sales there or your net sales. Your net sales will be 334,430 and your cost of sales will be 164,400. Now I've got some metric boys that wouldn't put cost of sales in brackets. I always tell them, trust me, whenever I prepare the statement of profit or loss, I ask them to put cost of sales in brackets and somehow they don't do that. You just put brackets there. Know that brackets are very, very important in accounting because brackets is the sign. It tells you whether that value that you're recording is negative or it is positive. And because they fail to put a bracket next to cost of sales, they add end up adding sales and cost of sales. And no, you cannot add sales and cost of sales to get gross profit. Cross profit is sales minus cost of sales, and that will be 168,030. Please don't make that mistake. Let's move on. The next adjustment. Trading stock on hand on 30 June 2022 was 90,000. Now, when they say it's trading stock on hand, that is the value of stock that has been counted. 
compared to what we have in our trial balance, our trading stock in the trial balance, I hope you guys remember the trading stock account, the general ledger trading stock account you prepared. Do you remember that general ledger trading stock account you prepared? On the debit side, you'll have balance brought down. On the debit side, you'll have bank, CPJ, and then you will have creditors control, CJ, and then you'll have DAJ, cost of sales, DAJ, which is um, stock retained by customers. On the credit side, you will have cost of sales, CRJ, which is you selling stock, cost of sales, DJ, which is you selling stock on credit. All of that. Remember, you're going to have balance brought down. That balance brought down is this trading stock amount here that was given to you in the trial balance, which is 99,000. But that 99,000 was incorrect because there was more stock that was retained by customers, remember, of 800 rand, and that we had to add that 800 rand. So meaning that our trading stock in the trial balance is sitting at 99,800. But note that the trading stock that we record in our general ledger, we use source documents. They come from the journals, as I have explained. And to record anything in the journal, you use the source document. If you bought stock for cash, you will use CPJ. Obviously, we'll use the bank statement in the CPJ and you will record it in the CPJ. If you bought stock on credit, you will record it in the creditor's journal and you will use the invoice. So, this value here only resides on the paper, on paper, or basically source documents. That 99,000, it's the value that we have based on the source documents. However, this one here, it's not based on the source documents. It is based on the physical stock count, meaning that we went to the warehouse and physically counted how much stock we have in the warehouse and we got 90,000. And that's when we realized that, oh, that value of stock that we recorded using source document is incorrect. We have to trust the stock counted because that is the physical stock count. It's there. We know it's there. We can't rely on that 99,000 because that 99,000 was just based on the source document. So the correct value between 99,800 and the 90,000 is the 90,000. Meaning that 99,000 that we have in the trial balance, we need to reduce it. And when you reduce it, the reduction is called trading stock deficit. If you needed to increase it, then the increase was going to be called trading stock surplus. Here, our trading stock deficit will be the difference between those two values, which is 9,800, meaning that the 12 balance value of trading stock needs to go down by 9,800. If it's a deficit, trading stock deficit, you will record it in your income statement under operating expenses as trading stock deficit. Remember to show workings in brackets. So you will take 99,800 and minus the 90,000, you will get 9,800. If it was a surplus, you were going to record it under other operating income. You got it. Let's move on. Number four says the insurance premium increased on the 1st of May with 40 rent per month. Before the increase, the premium monthly was 400. One month was paid in advance. So this will require me to draw. There was It was not necessary, but I just thought I should draw my timeline, which is my financial year. It starts on the 1st of July. So on the 1st of July, my rent, my premium actually was 400. But on the 1st of May, it increased by 40 rent. So from the 1st of May up until the next months that we paid up until July, the 31st of July, it was 440. Now, that 440 for July is the problem because that is the amount that was paid in advance. So meaning that that 440 for July, because July falls outside the financial year. Remember, our financial year ends on the 30th of June. That July 440 is what we call a prepaid expense. Here you were like, you didn't even need to calculate it. It is what we call a prepaid expense. A prepaid expense will be recorded in trading either receivables, but we need to reduce our insurance expense by that 440 because it's for next year. It was not for this year. We're not covered for that yet. So, when you take 5,320 and you minus 440, you will get 4,000. 
880, which is your actual insurance expense. Let's move on. Next one. The pre-adjustment trial balance was prepared before the salary general for June 2022 was taken into account. The details were as follows. We have a gross salary of 8,700. We've got deductions of 3,050. We've got employer's contribution of 300 and the net salary of 5,614. Please note that the gross salary for June, which is that 8,700, was not recorded. Therefore, we need to record it. And for us to record it, we are going to add it to our income statement. We are going to add that gross salary to our income statement. We are going to add it to salaries and wages. And obviously, that 8,700, we are all going to add it to our gross salary. Deductions, we do not record them. We normally record them in trade and other payables if they have not yet been paid to whoever the third party is. But for now, because they, it was not split and we were not asked um, trade and other payables, I will just record it, add it to my salaries and wages. And I will write this down because I know by saying it, most of you will miss it. So I'm going to write it down. Gross salary, if they, it was outstanding, basically, if it was erroneously left out, we have to add it. If it was erroneously recorded, we have to subtract it from salaries and wages, obviously. Okay. And we had deductions and we had contributions by the employer. What do we do with contributions by the employer? Employer's contribution must be added to employer's contribution, which is an expense and the operating expenses. If they tell you that employer's contributions are also debited to salaries and wages, you are going to add it to salaries and wages. Now here you were given employer's contributions separately. So because you were given employer's contributions separately, you are going to add the 300 and the employer's contribution. Now 4,700 plus that 300, it'll give you 5,000. If you're confused on this, please go to podcast and then check for salaries where I explained it thoroughly. Under podcast, I basically explained each of these. Even for trading stock deficit, go under podcast and look for trading stock deficit there. I explained it thoroughly in case you get lost here as to what is going on. Okay, let us move on, guys. Let us move on. Um, the next one will be depreciation. So depreciation must be taken into account as follows. On vehicles, it must be 15% diminishing balance method. And they said nothing about a new vehicle being purchased. You will notice that in the trial balance, your vehicle cost will be this 484,000 and your accumulated depreciation on vehicles is this 260,000. Now, when they say you must calculate depreciation on diminishing balance method, what do they mean? This is what they mean. They are simply telling you that, first of all, we've had this vehicle from the 1st of July 2021. So we've used it for the entire year. Now, vehicles are depreciated on diminishing balance method. No new vehicle vehicles were purchased. Now, when you calculate depreciation on diminishing balance method or carrying value method, you need to use this formula where depreciation is equals to carrying value times your depreciation rate multiplied by the number of months you have used the vehicle in that current financial year divided by 12. But here we didn't have carrying value, but you need to remember that carrying value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Remember the cost of your vehicles were amounted to 484,000 and accumulated depreciation amounted to 260,000. You subtract accumulated depreciation from cost and that will be your carrying value. And whatever you get as your carrying value, you times it by 15. We used this vehicle for the entire year. That's why I'm also multiplying it by 12 over 12. Again, if you get confused here, please go to Tangible Assets under uh, the podcast. I think it's written as Tangible Assets or Depreciation, okay? Carrying value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. So when you calculate it, 
And when you calculate depreciation on carrying burden, make sure that you first find the carrying burden and multiply it by your depreciation rate. And then if that asset was only used for part of the financial year, you multiply it. If let's say we, we bought it, we stopped using it on the 1st of um, July, no, on the 1st of Jan 2022. That means that if we stop using it on the 1st of Jan 2022, instead of having 12 here, I was going to have six. Okay, but here I have used it for the entire financial year. That's why I'm having 12 over 12. My depreciation on vehicles will be... 33,600, not 33,600. You are going to add it as depreciation in your operating expenses. Um, depreciation is an operating expense. So you will write it there as depreciation, open brackets, write it at 33,600. Done with vehicles, all right? And what did they say about equipment they said on equipment we are going to depreciate a 10 percent per annum on cost price so here you just use the cost price take into account that equipment worth five thousand was purchased on 1 january 2022 and it was recorded correctly now that's where the problem is now let's say they just told you that it was purchased equipment worth five thousand was purchased um on the 1st of January 2022 and they didn't say this does it mean that 5000 was recorded or does it mean it was not recorded if they don't give you that last part you always conclude that it was recorded because they told you that it was purchased so you always conclude it was recorded unless the adjustment tells you otherwise here I, there was no it was not necessary for them for them to tell us that it was recorded. Okay. Now, what effect does this have? This is the effect that it has. It means the cost price of the equipment that we have in the trial balance is the closing value. So I'm just going to put this in the timeline, okay, so that you can see what is happening. Um, so this is our financial year. We purchase this equipment right in the middle of the financial year. So note that equipment is depreciated at cost price. So if it's depreciated at a cost price, when we calculate depreciation, you just take the cost price, you multiply it by the depreciation rate, and then you multiply it by the number of months you've used that asset in the current financial year, you divide it by 12. Now, here we've got a problem because there was equipment that was purchased on the 1st of January. And this equipment was recorded. If nothing is said about the equipment not being recorded, um, always conclude that it, is, it was recorded. Always conclude that it was recorded if nothing is being said. Always conclude that it was recorded. Now, question is this, guys. I want you to take a look at the cost price of your equipment. It is 291000 My question to you is, is that 291000 the value of your equipment at the beginning of the year? Or is it the value of your equipment at the end of the year? It is the value of equipment at the end of the year. Why is it the value of equipment at the end of the year? I'll go back to this. The reason why it is the value of equipment at the end of the year um, it's because they told you that in January, we purchased equipment worth 5000 meaning that that 291000 already includes the 5000 that was recorded because they told you that the 5000 that was recorded um, was recorded. Actually, that's what they told you. So if it was recorded, it means it is included in the cost price of your equipment. You will need to work backwards to find the cost price at the beginning of the year, which will be 286000 Note that the equipment that we purchased, we've only used it for six months. Or else the old equipment, which is that 286000 we've had it for the 
entire year. And the accumulated depreciation that was given to you in the trial balance belongs to the old equipment. So the cost price of the old equipment will be the 286,000. And the accumulated depreciation of old equipment will be 143,000, meaning that the carrying value of the old equipment will be 143,000. Someone might be asking me, why are you calculating the carrying value of old equipment when we are actually depreciating equipment at cost price? Well, if you have watched my videos, you will know this. You need to calculate the carrying value to ensure that your current year depreciation on that old equipment does not exceed the carrying value at the beginning of the year. If it does exceed the carrying value of the equipment at the beginning of the year, then your current year depreciation will be the carrying value at the beginning of the year minus one. Here we are lucky because when I calculate my depreciation, it gives me 28,600, which is more than, which is not more than that 143. So I don't have to limit my depreciation here. Note that that 28,600 is the depreciation of the old equipment. That's why I just multiplied it by 10. And note that when I calculated my depreciation, I used this formula. I just took my cost price, which is this 286,000, and I multiplied it by the depreciation rate, which was 10%. It was given to you. And then you needed to multiply it. I multiplied it by 12 over 12 because we've used it for the entire year. The old equipment was used for the entire year. Now that 28,600, I'm going to take it to my income statement and add it to my depreciation expense. So it'll be 28,600. Okay. Let's discuss the new. The cost of the new equipment was 5,000, right? But this new equipment, accumulated depreciation on it was zero because it is new. Accumulated depreciation of a new asset will be zero because we haven't used it yet. Actually, we've only used it for six months. So at the beginning, when we purchased this equipment, its carrying value was just the same as the cost price. So when you depreciate it, I took the cost price times the depreciation rate. I've only used it for six months that I highlighted in green there in my number line. I've only used it for six months. And the fact that I've used it for six months, that's why I'm multiplying it by six over 12. Are we together then? And that will give me my depreciation on this new equipment, which will be 250. And I'm going to add it to my depreciation here. 250 added to your depreciation, it will give me my total depreciation, which will be 62,450. Now, just add all your expenses, all your operating expenses, because it looks like we're done there. No, 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 we're not done. I see something there. Let me just finish off the adjustment before I can add everything up. Because I realize I'm missing something. Now, here it is, number seven. A debtor, which is diesel law, who owed 1,300 was declared insolvent. How interesting. So the debtor was crying. A final dividend of 30 cents in the rent was deposited into the bank account. The rest must be written off. Now, if a debtor is declared insolvent, please check out my video on bad debts. I think it's grade 10. It's just on bad debts. The 30 cents was received for every one rent, it means we received 30 cents, and that 30 cents was recorded. So 30 cents of 1,300, how much is that? Let's take 1,300. 1,300 times 0, 0,3, it'll give me 390. It means that 390 has been recorded. So you're going to take 1,300 and minus that 390. This here is what we call bad debts. It was not recorded. Read the question carefully. When you calculate your bad debts, I would have just taken 1,300 and times it by 0.7 because if I received 30 cents, it means I did not receive the 70 cents. The 70 cents is the same as 0, 0,7 or 70 divided by 100. So that 910 was not recorded, and that is bad debts. When a debtor is declared insolvent, it means that they are unable to pay us. 
we need to write them off as bad debts. Are we together grade tens? Oh, the grade elevens and twelves are welcome because these questions are asked in grade eleven and twelve. Make sure you don't forget them. Now, sometimes this is how they like twisting it. Guys, please, let me just deal with this for now. Let me just deal with this for now so that I don't confuse you. I'm going to take that 910 and add it to bad dads. So I'll just find my bad dads and add that 910. And the amount will be 12,310. I don't know why I gave you one mark for that 910. It's supposed to have been two marks. Because this is what you will have. Now, here's how the... You know, guys, examiners are smart and you need to outsmart them. Sometimes they will say to you, we received 390 from the estate of the debtor that has been declared insolvent. Now, that 390 they will tell you that we only received 30 cents in the rents from the debtor. But know that they didn't say 390 is what the debtor was owing us. They're saying that's what we have received from a debtor. And they're telling you that we received 30 cents in the rent. Guys, that tells you that that 390 is the 30 cents. So when you want your bad debts, you will take 390 and multiply it by, you want the 70 and divide it by 30. Do you see how you will get that 390? Multiply by what you want, divide by what you have. Because we are given the 30 cents and the 30 cents is the 390, which is what was received. And we want the bet that bet debts will be the 70 that we did not receive that we need to write off as bad debts. This is for grade 11s and 12 and grade 10s as well. I would ask this to the grade 10. We good? You dig? Like and subscribe. Okay. Um, now, that's another, I was just going off ramp there, just trying to explain to you how they will ask this question if they don't ask it this way. Number eight says that an amount of 1,720 was received from a debtor, which is E Mbata. His account was written off as irrecoverable previously. Now, when a debtor order was previously written off and comes back and pays us, we don't record it as um, under debtor's control. Actually, we record that, that amount and uh, other operating income as bad debts recovered. So they say this amount was credited to the debtor's control account. Now, you are going to add it to the debtor's control account because you can't reduce that by debtor's control because this data is gone, guys. There was They were written off. They are gone, 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 gone. So they were not our data. That's what written off means. Now, when they come back and pay us and then we reduce our debtor's control by what they're paying us, is that making sense? This person was not a debtor at all because whatever they owed us, we subtracted it already from our debtor's control. So when they come back and pay us, we don't touch debtor's control. We just debit bank and we credit bad debts recovered. And bad debts recovered is income. That is why we will simply... Um, record bad debts recovered under income and the amount will be that 1720 as i've said if you were asked for uh provision for bad debts you are going to take this and add it to your debtors control amount before you can try and calculate your provision for bad debts and if you are asked for trading other receivables you are going to take that 1720 and add it to trading other receivables you good you dig awesome that's how it is supposed to be number nine the loan from Pem Bank, wow, Pem Bank, black like me, was received on the 1st of September 2021. Provide for any interest outstanding. Ah, this one will want me to check the loan in my another balance sheet section. I don't see a loan here. So let me check the next page. There it is, it's 12 percent and it's 30,000. So this loan, we didn't have it at the beginning of the year. So it will require me to 
okay, I did this here. I calculated my bed debts. Um, now I'm going to do the loan during the draw in the number line so basically i've had this loan only from september basically i've had them i have it i've had it for 10 months only so when i calculate interest on that um i will multiply it by 10 over 12 interest on this loan should be three thousand. but know that um this is the actual interest that we incurred on this loan because we've had this loan only for 10 months but according to the trial balance we paid 3,300 towards this loan. Okay, according to the trial balance, we paid 3,300 towards this loan. There it is, that 3,300. I even highlighted it for you. However, we were supposed to pay only 3,000. That means that 3,300, the extra 300 is what we call interest prepaid, which will be recorded in trade and other receivables. But when it comes to our interest expense, we need to subtract the 300. We need to subtract the 300. That's what we did. You good? You did? Please subscribe. Let's move on to the next one. Number 10 says that rent increase with 10% annually on 1 May. Rent for July was received in advance. Oh, my word. And this is where you need to draw your number line. When you draw your number line um, for rent, it will start on the 1st of July, obviously, and it will end on the 30th of June. But in May, something happened. That rent was increased by 10%. Okay, and meaning that it was X, 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 X all along. Now, when I put it on my number line, it means from July, 1 July, it was X. It was X for July, August, it was X. Now count, it's July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, um, and April. For 10 months, it was X. And then immediately in May, it increased by 10%, meaning that immediately after May, it is no longer at X, it is now at 110 because it increased by 10%. That's why I'm multiplying by 110. Now, if you get confused here, please go to podcast, check rent, income, or expense adjustment. I explained that thoroughly there. Now, the problem is that we received rent for 13 months. So even for one month, which is the July, rent was received. And that is the problem. We don't want rent for July because that rent was not earned. So basically, our rent was X for 10 months and it was 110% X for three months. And it gave us a total bill of 99,710. The problem is that rent that I highlighted in red for July is included in that 99,750. And I need to exclude it. But before I can exclude it, I need to know how much rent was for that July. But now I'm going to solve for, now someone asked me, but why do we have 3.3? Guys, you did this in grade eight. This is how I have 3.3. When you multiply numbers with numbers that have variables, you will just multiply the numbers first. So I took the three and I multiplied it by 110%. Okay. And I got the value, which is 3.3, but it's 3.3x because there was variable next to it. And then when you add like terms, you only add the coefficients. 3.3x plus 10 will give me 13.3. That's how I will get this 13.3 on the left-hand side. Guys, you did this in grade 8. Now, to get my x, I'll just divide by 13.3. So x will be 7,500. Note that x is rent before the increase. And I want rent for July, which is after the increase. So I'm just going to increase that 7,500 by 10%. It'll give me 8,250. This is rent per month after the increase. Rent for July will be that 8,250. So I need to take that 8,250 and minus it from my rent income because that is for next year. It's not for this year. And I will get that 91,500. Easy peasy, right?
lemon squeezy. Let's go to number 11. The bank statement received after the trial balance was completed stated interest on overdraft of 700. Interest on overdraft, guys, is interest expense. I'm doing this in grade nine, so you should be sorted out here. Interest on favorable bank balance will be interest income because that's interest on an asset. Interest on a liability will be an expense. We good? Now, what am I going to do now? I am going to take that 700 and add it to my interest expense, as I've said. Um, and it'll give me 3,700. So that 3,700 will be my interest expense. Now I'm just gonna add all my expenses up. So if I add all my expenses up, cause I'm done. Note that if they said it's interest on unfavorable balance, I was going to add it as interest income, but what they said is interest on unfavorable bank balance. So that's why I included it as interest expense. Now guys, I'm just gonna get my gross profit, which will be that other operating income. I will just add them up. It will give me 121,813. You add it with 168,030. It will give you that 289,843. Your other operating expenses, when you add them up, it will give you 196,872. Okay, so you're going to take your gross operating profit minus that 196,872. It will give you operating profit, which is this 92,971 and then you're going to add that with your interest income to get your interest your profit before tax and then you subtract your tax to get your net profit which will be 95,271 easy right i hope you enjoyed it Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions or send me an email and let your friends know about this channel. And don't forget to come back to check out more videos. Hotong.